What is up, Tooltubers, YouTubers? How are y'all today? My name is Brad. Welcome to my workbench. If you're new to this channel, hello. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you are new. I would really appreciate it. You're here to say, Brad, I'm tired of being a residential electrician. I'm tired of being a commercial electrician. I want to be as badass as you and be an <laughs> industrial electrician. What do I need to do that? Well, we're going to take you through that. We're going to take you through all the tools you need on your first day. My opinion, at least. And we're going we're gonna to throw in the tools that you should get along the way. Get into it, because what? We're two minutes in, you ain't even seen a tool yet. So, first off, your first day, this is what you're going to need. You're going to need a nice set of screwdrivers. Uh... This is not my full set. I forgot to bring them home to shoot this video. Here's a picture. This is a set of screwdrivers I use. I like this Milwaukee set. I don't want to beat on these. So you need to go and buy yourself a beater screwdriver. But man, this, this is going to be your go-to pry bar when you need one real quick. Uh, you're going to be beating off rusted up pecker heads. A pecker head is a junction box on a motor. You'll hear it all the time. Uh, but chisel, well, we don't do a whole lot of chiseling because everything's metal. But you'll see, you're going to need a beater screwdriver. Minus the screwdrivers. Your other most used tool you'll have are these bad boys. You will use your channel locks every day. Every day. Uh, whether it's taking off flex fittings, whether it's... Uh, let me think. Flex fittings, you grab them just because you're not sure what you're going to run into. You need to take a nut off. Uh, all kind of fittings you're going to use channel locks for. It's just part of it. Do not buy any channel locks less than 10 inches. But you can buy them as big as the 20 inch. I think they're uh, 460s. I think they're called channel lock 460s. I'll shoot a picture up. Uh, but yeah, we use 20 inch pair of channel locks. They have a jaw width of six and a half inches because you're going to deal a lot in the industrial environment. You're going to deal with four inch flex conduit all day, every day. I'd say the tool I use the most after these two is a knife. Now, I don't use this knife, but a cheap foldable razor knife will be at you fine. Not all plants or industrial environments will allow you to have a your own razor knife. Safety people want you to have, you know, the ones that fold and still slide in or whatever. But if you don't have any other safety regulations, this will get you by. One of these little Sheffields are like 10 bucks at Walmart. You never have to worry about sharpening the blade and you will use a knife a lot. Here later in the video, when we get to upgrading your tools, I'll show you the knife I use. Now we're just into tools I use often, but I'm not ranking them. Let's just go with this one. A nice pry bar. You're going to use a hammer quite a lot. At work right now, I actually have a little two and a half pound uh, mini sledge that I bought at Walmart. And the only reason I bought it at Walmart is because it has this really short handle. And it's really nice because you're not gonna be knocking bricks out of a wall you're just looking to get a little bit more force to drive this in between the cracks of a pecker head or tap a motor over a little bit or tap your pecker head to loosen up the rust so uh a pair of dykes yeah, let's stay on the plier track a pair of needle nose these little quen strippers i actually use these at work for a little bit and these are still ones that you want on your first day. And this is what I do most of my stripping with, is a pair of cable cutters. You're going to need some sockets, guys. We use sockets and wrenches a ton because everything we work with is big. You're not getting peckerheads off with nut drivers most of the time because they're rusted on. I don't know. How. So I would suggest for an apprentice to save money, just get you 
the Harbor Freight. I think this is actually a Husky version. Yeah, this is the Husky version of the pass-through sockets. Standard and metric. Okay. And guys, the reason I don't have my tools is because it's really hard to keep get your tools in and out of the gate with security at my plant. So it's just it's it's a really big hassle, and we're not allowed to videotape anything inside the plant. So I can't shoot this like during my lunch break or anything. So these are the tools I'd suggest you'd have on your first day. We're going to run through these bonus tools a little quicker. These are tools you're also going to use, but you're not going to use them every single day. Hex keys. Extendable magnet. A multi-bit screwdriver. Go check out my multi-bit screwdriver review and you'll find... A crescent. Uh, I would suggest around a 10 inch, but 12... Linesman's pliers. There they are, guys. I know. Every electrician needs a pair of linesman's pliers. Other than your pass-through set, I would suggest getting a real set of sockets, deep and shallow, metric and standard, and upgrade your ratchet. I prefer this kind of ratchet, the swivel head. You're going to need a torpedo level. Uh, when you're bending conduit, this is a must. Oh, my upgraded knife. This is the actual knife I use at work. This was actually the first tool review I ever did. So if you scroll way down, you'll find this one. There's many other different types of knife, but I really suggest getting some with this sheep's foot blade. Uh, nut drivers are great to have. Uh, of course, you don't need them on your first day because you can get by with a socket set. But there are times that nut drivers come in more handy. A big old, at least an 18, this is a 24, but at least an 18 inch pipe wrench. And then... Specialty items, your meters, you're going to need a multimeter, a amp probe, amp clamp. Uh, oh, non-contact voltage detector should be on your first day, but you should be somebody with somebody that knows whether shit's hot or not. And sorry, back to meters, and a meg, a meg ohm meter. You'll hear it called a mega all the time. Very important for testing your motors, guys. List ratcheting cable cutters. Later on, I don't even have mine because they're so damn expensive, but I wish I did because I hate having to find somebody to borrow them. You're going to be dealing with anything from a half horsepower motor to a thousand plus horsepower motor that's as big as my shed. I mean, these motors are get huge. So along with those big motors, big wire. Insulated tools. If you want to buy insulated tools later on, that's cool. You really won't use them that often because in the industrial environment safety 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 everything's locked out tagged out you're going to want a pen and a piece of paper a notepad unfortunately i didn't plan well enough i didn't bring one but i carry a small notepad everywhere i go to take notes of what i need to do for the day things that i learned as i went you're going to have a lot thrown at you. You're not going to remember it all. I don't care how good you are. Get a pen. Get a notepad. It's probably the most important tool out of all of these. But I do work on the maintenance side. So if you're on the, con the construction, industrial, electrician side, these tools are going to change. Maintenance side, this is what you need. We're not pulling big wire. You know, we do a little bit of conduit bending, a lot of motor troubleshooting, a lot of control troubleshooting. Uh, sometimes add a plug here. You're going to be dealing with really high voltage. So, that's, I, I mean, there's a lot more I can go into. I want to make some more videos, maybe a tips and tricks. That'll be coming soon. Hopefully I can shorten this down. So we're just going to end it, guys. Brad... This is my workbench. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it wasn't too long. Sorry you gotta buy so many tools. It's a great trade to get into. It's fun. It's exciting. I, I learn something new every day. So if you're thinking about it, feel free to send me an email. Brad's Workbench333 at gmail.com Shoot me a comment down here. I'll answer any questions I can to the best of my ability. Uh... Hit that like button. As always, hit that subscribe button, and I'll holler at y'all next time. Peace!